Hey everyone, C Stan here with the Lord of the Rings The Living Card Game. Today I'm looking at a direct damage deck, inspired in part by some discussion that took place on the Fantasy Fight Games forum, started by a post um, by a member called Jan B. He posted a direct damage deck and I thought uh, that we haven't really explored direct damage in a long time. Uh, it's we've had new cards introduced that can really help it out. And what I wanted to do is actually try a combo um, re uh, revolving around Sword Thane. So Sword Thane, you can turn an objective ally, sorry, uh, a unique ally, into a hero. And... I thought it would be a good idea to put it on Anborn, uh, as Anborn has a response that when an enemy enters the staging area, you can exhaust him to deal one damage to that enemy and raise its engagement cost by five. So if you could get some sort of readying on him, he could do that repeatedly and be just as good, almost, a direct damage dealer as Thalon who deals one damage to every enemy as they're revealed during the quest phase. So the ideal situation is actually would be for Anborn to ready to be ready every time an enemy shows up. And one way you can do that is with Wingfoot. So Wingfoot's an attachment where the you exhaust the character to commit them to the quest and then you name a type enemy, location, treachery, and if that type of card gets revealed during the quest phase, you get to ready the attached character. And so what's cool is if you quest with Anborn with Wingfoot on him, and then an enemy shows up, well, then you get to ready Anborn, and then he's ready, and you can use his response to deal one damage to that enemy, and then he's exhausted again. But if a second enemy shows up, you get to use Wingfoot again because Wingfoot doesn't have a once per turn limit. So he's continually ready. Um, however, Wingfoot does require you to attach it to a ranger hero, so we need to make Amborn a hero first. So it's a very big and expensive combo and kind of tricky to pull off and uh, quite possibly isn't worth it in a lot of quests. And with all the resources dedicated towards getting the combo up, it's kind of hard to, to make it work in a solo setting because your questing is not so great. Uh, and there are maybe some enemies that the direct damage won't be able to handle. And for situations like this, we're playing Nightmare 7th level. You start with some enemies in the staging area. And obviously those enemies don't start with damage. So you need some way to damage them. Um, so what I've, I'm doing is I'm, I'm playing with another player, Mandela. Uh, and he's using a Sylvan Haldir deck. And Haldir is a great pair for this deck. Because he has the ability to attack before the enemies do and so that can actually kill off the enemies or weaken them enough that a card like Gondorian Spearman can deal the last and final damage if Haldir if Haldir hasn't killed them off himself so we got a kind of unfortunate start here with a lot of enemies in the staging area this is this is not ideal for the deck um, we got uh kind of uh, unlucky draw, but we'll see if our decks can come back from that. You can see my a lot of my characters are already damaged. Uh, and Thalon has watchful eyes on him. However, luckily he also has the, uh, the Book of Marzabul, so he doesn't have to exhaust a quest. So I can, I can still use him for defending. 
So Haldir there takes out that uh, goblin archer. A big nuisance if you don't have someone like Haldir. Okay, and then unfortunately the watchful eyes bring out another enemy into play. Uh, and here I'm playing, I um, accidentally hit new round before uh, being able to play Peace and Thought. So I'm drawing my 5 here, and then manually drawing the card for the second round. So this deck requires on a lot of card draw to get all the pieces together. So lots of Doom cards. Um, ideally, you want to get it out turn 2. I mean, turn one is technically possible, but extremely unlikely. Um, turn two is much better. And it doesn't look like I've got Wingfoot in my hand yet. So the unlimited readying won't come into play this round, but at least I'll have Anborn out um, for one round. And here, I guess I'm trying to decide how to spend the resources on my sword thing. Because uh, once you sneak attack in an ally, you can play sword thing down on that ally. And that ally will not return to your hand at the end of the phase because it's not an ally anymore. So this the sneak attack sword thing combo is a way to just make, make Amborn a little cheaper. Okay, and we have the Sylvan deck over there doing its thing. Um, Gandalf is another really great direct damage card. Uh, it's, I've got a few in, in this deck, both to help with card draw at the beginning, and then it can deal massive direct damage to those bigger enemies that the, that the damage from Thalon and Anborn and the Spearmen can't take down. So the main idea, once it's set up, is to have Thalin and Anborn dealing two damage to every enemy that comes into play. And then you've got a backup of Gondorian Spearmen with Spears of the Citadel. And a Spear of the Citadel also deals a damage to the attacking enemy. So the two of them combined deal two damage while defending. So all told, that's four damage to an enemy before you have to worry about its shadow card because it'll be dead if it has four or less hit points. And if it's got two or less, it dies before even the end of the quest phase, which helps with your questing. And then we also have Gandalf and Sneak Attack to deal four damage to big enemies. And we've got uh, some rangers with ranger bows. And these guys can pick and choose where they want to put their damage to enemies in the staging area so that it's all sorted out um, and the enemies get weakened enough so that your spearmen can kill them off. Okay. So we just reveal Goblin Tunnels this round, and we also get uh, another of the Goblin Archers, and he actually gets killed off just by Thalon alone. So that's, that's nice. I didn't have to use Anborn, so... Luckily, the the fact that I'm I'm not I don't have a wing foot in play yet uh, wasn't a huge deal. That round was kind of nice, and I'm not sure if we caught this, but we should have dealt one damage to a character when that goblin archer came into play. Um, 
I mean, we could have easily, easily handled that. Um, over on the Sylvan player, so. Okay, so Anborn defends actually this uh, Goblin Spearman. But he had a bad shadow card revealed that boosted attack and would have killed Anborn. So at that moment, Haldir jumped in uh, to kill the enemy before the attack resolved. And unfortunately, that meant that the other enemy, which Haldir was waiting to kill, had to be defended. So I had to kill off my spearmen and... That's really unfortunate because the Spearman takes a couple turns to uh, get into play. So refresh phase, I have um, I played Peace and Thought and I drew up into Wingfoot. So finally, the system is online, but we don't really have the backup of the Spearmen and the Spears of the Citadel just yet. But at least we'll be dealing two damage to each enemy that comes into play. If you get Wingfoot, I should get a uh, resource on Anborn as well because he's a hero now. And I do have Titan our belts in hand. So I'm probably not going to play anything else and just wait for next turn. Oh yes, and uh, I guess with that Goblin Archer we found last turn, we I don't think we had to deal a damage to anybody because Thalin actually kills off that enemy before uh, his effect can resolve, before he enters the staging area. So, yeah, no need to do damage for the Goblin uh, Archer with Thalin around. Okay, so this deck can't really quest very much, but we will do uh, a whopping two willpower from Anborn and Thalin. Our hobbits uh, have been busy being peaceful and thinking thoughts, which has been very helpful, but it puts them out of the commission for the, the quest phase. Okay, Gandalf comes in. So it helps that the other deck is here, for sure. Um, it's, it's been doing a lot of direct damage itself. Um, and so far, I think we've only had to actually legitimately defend two attacks. But sometimes with a luckier draw where you don't get so many enemies right to the start, you can actually pull off a win uh, without taking any attacks, at least not getting to the point where you have to resolve the shadow effect. Of course, this is Nightmare 7th level, so it's a little harder. Um, okay, so we get Undisturbed Bones. I've got to deal X damage to an ally I control, but I have no allies. So if my Gondorian Spearman had still been around at this point, he would have died anyway. Okay, so we can resolve the quest. Uh, 14 versus 10. There's two enemies in the staging area. One of them will not engage us. One of them will, but Haldir will be able to uh, pick him off. Of 
deciding where to travel now. I think uh, Goblin Tunnels is probably better because it saves our progress on the quest. And so I won't have to defend this. Haldir will just kill him off. I'd like a turn where we just get a stream of uh, like five enemies with two hit points. I think that would be really fun to see. I gotta tighten our belts down and That'll let me play another Spearman. But we're still actually missing quite a few pieces of this puzzle. I haven't drawn into a single Ranger Bow yet. So I haven't been able to use stuff like Goblin Cleaver. But as soon as I get a Master of the Forge out, I think that'll really help the, the process. It can be a bit of a pain to wait for the resources to trickle in. Um, I would have thought by now I'd have a card like um, Good Harvest in my hand. But unfortunately, uh, I haven't drawn into that. But a Good Harvest would let me use up all those leadership resources and play down um, a couple more allies at least. I could, if I wanted to, play Gandalf and use up the leadership resources to draw a few cards. But we'll see how it goes. This time I do get to quest with um, Sam and Pippin. So I'm going to be committing seven. Which, you know, isn't too too bad considering how much this deck contributes to the quest. And we get another Undisturbed Bones, removing another Gondorian Spearman from play. So, we've been having extremely poor luck with our Gondorian Spearman here. See, I've lost two of them already. And we've only got one more in our deck and there's 28 cards in there. So, all right. So here, Thalin and Anborn deal a damage each. So having the Spearman around would have allowed us to just defend with the Spearman and finish him off. So I don't know if the, the encounter deck has some sort of intelligence to it. Um... I mean, it's not a disaster because Haldir, Haldir can finish him off. But Haldir could have spent his time killing off that other goblin that's in the staging area. So, Okay, and then Hanamarth Exhaustin reveals the next card in the encounter deck so that we can see what kind of shadow effect it would have. The reason he decided to do this is basically Haldir could either... We could either engage... Uh, did we have a choice to engage that guy? I thought he had a low threat cost. Um, maybe he didn't. I guess in theory the idea was uh, we Haldir could either kill him in the staging area or once he engaged me and got Delta Shadow. So by using Hanamarth, you can see the next card of the deck and see whether or not you want it to get it as an encounter card or as a shadow card. Okay, so I played Gandalf down for full price because I'm sick of not having the cards I want. And drew a few cards. Finally got Good Harvest. And, well, now I drew into Sneak Attack, but Gandalf's going to leave play. Okay, 
So I'm going to play a bunch of cards with my lore resources. With Good Harvest, that is. So six resources. I play two cost ally, two cost ally, and two one cost attachments. So now I don't have a spearman, but I've got a ranger bow. It can deal one damage. And I'll also take a look at the top five of my deck. Take a Spear of the Citadel. And now I've got a weapon on a hero. So I've got Ranger Bow on Anborn. And the purpose of that is to use Goblin Cleaver, which will deal two damage to an enemy, three damage if it's an orc. We quest again. Um, I've got some some decent willpower here with Gandalf in play. And we get a Hornblower, so he surges and has another card get revealed. So he double surges. I've got to deal three damage to an ally I control. Um, so I put the three damage on I put three damage on Gandalf. And now we get a big guy. So we get the cave troll. So unfortunately our direct damage doesn't kill him. But we do get beats and, beats and echoes, which will reveal um, another four cards putting all the enemies into play. But Thalin and Anborn kill off the enemy as soon as it comes into play. So we reveal the top four. So it does use the word reveal. So Thalin triggers and then it enters the staging area. So Anborn triggers. So it's important to note that those two triggers are a little different when revealed and when it enters the staging area are technically a little different. Um, so, so in this case, they both trigger though. There are situations where, um, that one wouldn't trigger, but Anborn could, um, I mean, if an enemy comes from out of play into the staging area, I think you could trigger Amborn, if he was ready, of course. The problem is uh, Wingfoot wouldn't ready Amborn in that case. Amborn would have to be ready somehow. Or if, for example, the treachery was to discard the top five cards of the deck and then add all enemies discarded by this effect to the staging area, then Thalon wouldn't trigger, but Amborn could trigger. However, again, Wingfoot is also tied to the revealing of the card. Okay, so we clean up some of the enemies there. Um, the My little ranger with his bow takes off the the drummer and Haldir kills off that other enemy that's been sitting there for a really long time. Heal off Pippin, who was one damage away from dying. And then we'll just leave the troll sitting up there. He has an engagement cost of 33, and Mandela had 34, but he was actually at an engagement cost of plus 7. Five from Anborn and two from Pippin. So we did not have to engage him. Okay, so I've been playing some Deep Knowledge. Grabbing some cards here. Now I've drawn finally into my last copy of Gondorian Spearman. And... I also have a Spear of the Citadel in hand. So assuming I can draw into 
some way to get more tactics resources, I could actually play him down. But it doesn't look like that's the case. I do get a sneak attack and a Gandalf, though, from that. Which could deal 4 damage to the troll, putting it at 6 damage. And we could finish that off with the ranger. So grabbing the other ranger bow here. Don't need wing foot or another spear. But the reason I want a, a second ranger bow is because you can um, you can put the other ranger bow on Anborn as well and do a double a double goblin cleaver for uh, four damage or six damage, depending whether or not it's an orc. So here I sneak in Gandalf for the quest phase, deal four damage to the troll, and quest my characters again. So I, I commit eleven again. So it's it's not terrible at questing. I mean, two turns in a row now I've had eleven willpower. Um, considering that it. it it contributes so heavily to the to the combat. Uh, you might think it would have almost uh, no questing power, but I mean, obviously, it's very helpful to have the Sylvan deck um, there, especially Haldir. I wouldn't, yeah, I, w I would say this is very much a team effort. Um, this deck would quickly fall apart if it wasn't um, for its ally here. Okay, so we move on to the next quest stage, and I lose the Book of Marzabul. And that's kind of unfortunate because that means Salon's got to exhaust a quest now, and he's got the Watchful Eyes attached meaning I'm going to have to reveal an additional encounter card every turn. But I figured we, uh, the, the first quest stage is the most important one where you set up. So rather than attach Watchful Eyes to one of my hobbits um, and like no longer use Peace and Thought or something like that, I thought that would be worse overall than to just have it have it attached to Thalon and deal with an extra card um, each round in the second phase. Okay, so if you're not familiar with Nightmare Mode, um, in the second phase, we get um, the Overseer. And the Overseer gets, you know, plus X stats, where X is the number... So he's at three, 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 twelve, but he gets plus three, plus X, where X is the highest number of resources on a goblin enemy in play. So there's many ways in nightmare mode for goblins to attain resources. Um, and the resources, they, for example, on the enemy that's in the staging area right now, That'll give that that enemy plus two attack. It has two resources. Um, but each each nightmare goblin enemy has a different way it interacts with the resources, and I think we uh, will see a couple others. Okay, so we swapped around. Um, where we did the damage just because, um, sorry, not where we did the damage, but who we decided to engage. Because Mandela was planning on, on using feigned voices to prevent an attack this round. But if he had done it on that goblin enemy, um, right now goblin enemies with resources, thanks to our active location, are immune to um, events. So the way we had to do it is Haldir would have to has to kill the goblin 
and then you have to faint the troll. Because if you do it the other way around, you can't faint the goblin. Um, so nothing, nothing sketchy there. Just thinking it through. Um, okay. Uh, for the overseer, um, I'm just showing. Uh, I'm just showing Mandela that we don't have to kill the troll because next round I'll be able to play a spearman, and the spearman will be able to deal the last damage to that troll. So. Um, Okay, uh, so here I think I accidentally clicked 10, top 10 cards with the Master of the Forge. Um, so I just picked from the top 5 and ignored the other cards and just shuffled the deck. I'm very used to using Galadriel and, and looking at the top 10, so I, I think that's where that came from. <laughs> okay, so... Now there's a bit of math involved in how we kill off the Overseer. He's got two damage and is going to need to take ten more. The Goblin Spearman we pay for, but he's go going to be used to kill off the Troll. Um, okay, we get a second ranger bow so in theory we could play two goblin cleavers and that would deal six damage and Gandalf if we well we don't have enough resources to play him but if we did we would just be able to get that tenth damage um, so it might not happen this round, especially with more enemies being revealed this round, I'm not really sure what to expect. We might end up having to use our goblin cleavers on a different enemy. So for now, I'll just, I guess, not play anything, and next round I'll be able to play Tighten Our Belts. And we'll get an extra resource on our two leadership heroes because they didn't spend anything. And that'll let us play Gandalf down for sure. So the extra resource every round from Anborn is quite useful, even though there's almost no leadership cards to pay for in this deck. Once Anborn's in play, the only leadership resources you have to spend are on sneak attacks. So it's a lot more than you need. So that's why we've got Good Harvest and Gandalf in there to make use of the neutral resources. It's the game is, you know, already quite developed and I haven't gotten a Spear of the Citadel out yet. I think if my Gondorian Spearmen had not died so quickly each time I played them, I would definitely at this point have one in play with a spear. Uh, which, goes to, which goes to show that even without that, many of the enemies here in 7th level can be killed by direct damage without the Spearmen and Spear. It possibly means that this deck can handle, or this pair of decks, I should say, can handle um, quests where the enemies have a, a little higher average hit points. Seventh level was one of the one of the lower ones in terms of average hit points, although the nightmare mode changes that up a, a little bit. So we see an orc taskmaster here. It adds a resource to every goblin in play and every time a goblin takes at least one damage 
you just remove the resource instead of the damage. Um, oh, and we get another one. Okay. Luckily, they themselves are not goblins, so they don't get the resource. Okay, and the end of the staging step, we have the special rule for 7th level where we reveal some more cards. However, in this case, that enemy will just die immediately. So the end of the staging step is still the quest phase, so Wingfoot is still active. So Airborne can ready and deal the second damage to that guy and kill him off. And so we don't really have to worry about him. Okay, so quite a good turn for Thalon and Amborn. They've dealt six damage total already, and it's just the quest phase. And we already can see ahead that the troll is going to die um, from my spearman. And we can see that I've got... A number of goblin cleavers in play, so I could be dealing some more direct damage. We get to com we completed the, the active, and now we have to deal with these enemies here. So that spearman with four resources is going to be a little bit of trouble. Considering um, he's a he's immune, um, well, these taskmasters are in play. So with my ranger bow, um, just before we engage, I'm deciding who I should put that damage on. Um, so I'm trying to decide here. If I do it, if I put the damage on the enemy in the staging, and then use my ranger bows, both of, both of them, I can kill off this taskmaster. But I think it's better instead if I engage the enemy that takes the damage. So this is an optional engagement that I'm deciding between. So I should put the damage on the taskmaster that I'm deciding to optionally engage because that way he gets up to three damage and um, the goblin cleaver deals another three damage because it's an orc. So it brings it up to six and kills him off. Okay, but now we still have to deal with a couple enemies. So one of them is uh, feigned, and the other, the other one. I guess we can uh, put that attack over on the defender of the Nath from the Sylvan player. Because currently I can't, uh, I could, like, in normal situation, in normal mode, I could play Goblin Cleaver and just kill him off. Um, but in this scenario, it would only remove one resource token from him. So we've got a shadow reveal, put him in the staging area. Uh, I don't like that shadow because it bypasses the um, Thalon and Amborn setup. However, that guy only has two hit points, so even if he bypasses Thalon and Amborn, he can die from Ranger Bows and Gondorian Spearmen. So it'd be a lot more annoying if it was like a four hit point enemy um, that could be added to the staging area in that way. But as it is, it's all right. So uh, Goblin, sorry, the uh, Gondorian Spearmen kills off the troll. 
Haldir kills off the enemy that just got added to the staging area. And now we go to the refresh phase. Um, and I've got a Titan, our belts I can play, and also a Peace and Thought I could play. Drawing five cards here. Oh, and we have to also resolve the um, Watchful Eyes at the end of the combat phase. Okay. These are the cards I've been wanting to see for a while. Some Daron's Runes and some Good Harvests. So I discard my Uniques and... Play Legacy and Numenor. We'll raise our threat by four each. Get a resource down on everyone. All right, we get a sneak attack in Gandalf. And trying to compute whether or not we can actually finish this turn. Maybe not. There's a lot of progress we need on the quest. And um, I don't have the willpower from Sam and Pippin this round because they're exhausted. We've still got to kill off that Overseer. With Sneak Attack and Gandalf, um, we could be dealing a lot. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm actually... Uh, deciding to play Sneak Attack Gandalf um, in the resource phase. So this is before uh, cards get played. I know I know. technically Mendel has already played some of his cards, but it took me a while to do the math uh, on this, so um, I just did it now. But this allows me essentially to play Gandalf for five in the planning phase to get his effect again. So I play Gandalf for five and I put the damage on the Overseer. That puts him within range of a single Goblin Cleaver or also my Spearman with Spear. So I have some flexibility there. And he sneaks in um, an ally just for the quest phase. He didn't quite have enough um, resources to play him. Um, okay. So counting up the willpower, we might not really have enough. We've got a total of 20. Um, we need to make uh, full progress on the quest this turn. All right, let's see what we reveal. We got a Goblin Spearman and Anborn Thalon takes him out. 
We got a pit goblin and two damage. So that puts him within range of a spearman. However, uh, once he's revealed, he gets two resources put on him. So unfortunately, um, that second damage, it only removes one resource token because of the taskmaster that's in play and doesn't actually deal damage. Okay, now we do the forced effect on stage two. Um, and we just decide uh, to play that one. So I've got to deal, I kill off one of my allies. Oh no, it's only enemies, right, that you have to put into play from stage two. So no effect. Okay, I had exhausted my ranger to ignore the threat of the first enemy. So we only have one threat in the staging area. And I think he miscalculated here. Uh, we only have 20 willpower total. So not 22. So we are actually too short of the quest. So unfortunately, if something like if Haldir had maybe committed to the quest, um, then we would have we would have had it but it was kind of maybe unrealistic to suspect that we would only get one threat in the staging area um after the after all the cards so i think we could had kind of banked on doing another turn um it's a safer play this way Haldir can take something out um Okay, play Goblin Cleaver on the Taskmaster after the Ranger Bow deals the damage, and that'll take him out. And then my second Goblin Cleaver on the second Ranger Bow uh, takes out the Overseer. And then with the Goblin Swordsman, the Spearman. Um... Because he's the goblin, the goblin swordsman uh, is no longer immune. The resources are no longer making them immune to damage because the taskmasters are not in play. Okay. All right. So I heal up Thalin. And unfortunately, we have to do the Watchful Eyes, and we get a bunch of enemies out. So that was very unfortunate. That's <laughs> that's three enemies that get to bypass the thalon anborn combo. Um, so... Good thing that that came in on the last turn. So Gandalf, I'm deciding to put the uh, direct damage on the skirmishers. I mean, if we were purely going for score at this point, I probably would have just reduced my threat by five. But this uh, this deck is really not about getting a good score. There's so many Doom cards in here. Um, it's really just about how fun it is to keep readying Anborn. 
it's a lot of fun to just keep readying him and exhausting him. I really want to take this to a four-player game uh, where the enemies just keep flowing out. Um, I think it would be a ton of fun. Um, again, it's not really meant for every kind of quest, and it is extremely helpful to have Haldir on the other side. Um, so this is certainly not, you know, something you would take up against, I don't know, like Waste of Eriador or Battle of Karndoom or something like that. It's just a fun little combo um, to try out. Um, if it's quite a long game that we're playing here as well. If it had gone any longer, uh, we might have threaded out, actually. So finally, at the end of stage at the end of the staging step, uh, we reveal an enemy, which Anborn kills. All right, we total our willpower. We got 25, which for sure is, uh, is enough to complete the stage. So there you have it. Uh, victory against... Nightmare 7th level with a direct damage deck. So you can you can check out this deck if you want. Uh, I'll put it in a link in the description. And I think there are ways to modify it too to your liking. There are many other direct damage cards out there right now. There's, um, there's stuff like infighting and... Um, there's uh, the new card, Skyward Volley. You need a, a ranged character for that one, though. You There's also Fresh Tracks, a very underused card. And all of those might work if you swap some cards around. Um, this deck was mainly just designed for the sole dedication of getting Amborn into play as fast as possible to get that, that second damage. So, let me know what you think. Uh, I think this is a really fun deck to play. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just so much fun to be readying Amborn all the time. So I really encourage you to try it out and let me know what you think. In the meantime, uh, happy questing.